Now we've got our various class names set up in the HTML, so we can distinguish the different navigation areas and other parts of the page, and we're ready to begin styling. First of all, we'll create our overall layout, putting the various areas into boxes positioned where we want them in the browser window, and we're aiming in this lesson to get from this to this. So in Komodo Edit, I've got my index.html opened up in one tab and the empty style.css in another. And we're going to start at the top of the page by styling the header and gradually work down to the bottom. So the header is an HTML element in its own right, so its style selector doesn't have any prefix. No hash, no dot, it's just header. And then curly braces. And then the style declarations inside. And that's spelt wrong. I'll give it a height of 50 pixels. And I'll make it a visible area of its own by offsetting it from the rest of the page with a bottom border. Border bottom. One pixel solid grey. And don't forget the semicolon at the end of each style declaration. Next, the Select Users div, where our users and admin navigation are going to go. So eventually that's going to be all of this part. For the moment we're aiming for it to look like this. Select Users is a class, so the selector has to begin with a dot. We need to force the position, we want this to be up here, so we need to force the position of it up to the top right of the document. And we do this by using position absolute. Now that it's positioned with absolute positioning, we can position it using exact pixel positioning. And I'm going to position it 65 pixels from the right of the document window using right 65 pixels and 15 pixels down from the top. If we go and preview that, that's our current version, and there we are, and it's moved up there. Using a comma-separated list, as I explained earlier, we can style the common elements of the users and the admin lists together. Using ul.users, so that's combination selector, it's an unordered list, but it has to have the class users, comma, and then ul. Admin. So we can apply the same styles to both of these. I'll give these absolute positioning and make them butt right up against the right hand side of the window using position absolute again, right zero. We don't really have to say zero pixels because zero zero is anything. And we will save and refresh. And there we are, that's a bit of a mess. The final website's going to have the users and the admin lists positioned more or less on top of each other in terms of their positioning. That one pulls down, and that one pulls down. But we're going to arrange it so that we only see one of them at a time using jQuery. We can't do that at the moment, so we've got both of them literally on top of each other. So just to tidy things up, for the moment we'll hide one of them. Let's hide ul.admin by giving it a display setting of none. Just so it's not quite so untidy to look at. Next we want the favourites list, which is here, to appear to the left of the main section. Again, we're aiming eventually for this. We do this by styling the favourites list class. So that's dot favs underscore list. And we're going to make it float to the left so that other things float to its right by applying float left. So this means that it will float to the left and other elements will float to its right instead of appearing below it as they would normally do. Save and refresh. And that hasn't worked, it hasn't floated to the left. Why not? Let's go back to index.html and have a look and see where's our 
Here we are. This is wrong. This nav should be not favs. That should be favs list. And here the ul should be class equals favs. So change that. Save that. So we've got the nav is class equals favs list and the ul is class equals favs. So just double check that. Make sure it's right. And here we're applying the float to the favs list. Go back and refresh. And now we can see that the float's beginning to work, but that's not quite what we want yet. In conjunction with the float, we also have to give favs list a width. And I'm going to give it a width of 175 pixels. So that's better. It's pushed that out more like we want it. And I'm also going to give it some space to the left with a margin left of 45 pixels. Now the favorite movies list, which is ul.favs. I'm going to give this a width of 170 pixels. And temporarily, I think I'll surround the whole thing with a solid blue border. This is just a designer's trick, just to put this temporarily here so that the element's really visible and we can check its position more easily. We'll remove this border later. This border style declaration is interesting. It's a shortcut declaration. We do three things in one. It's short for border width, one pixel, border style, solid, and border color, blue. If we save that and go back and refresh, and we can see that that's pushed out from the left and it's got that border around it. Now we need to style this main section, which is section class equals movie list. So that's dot movie list. And we can apply the same styling to the single movie as well, using a comma separated list. And for that, I'll use the class movie single. So these need to appear to the right of the favorites list. At the moment it doesn't, it's to the right here and then it drops off to the left. So we need to change that and make it appear to the right. And we do this by giving it a left margin. So the favorites list has a width of 175 pixels and a left margin of 45 pixels, which adds up to 220 pixels. So we'll give the movie list and the movie single areas a left margin of 225 pixels, just to push them out five pixels beyond the favorites list. There we are, and that's solved that problem. We've got a little bit of a gap here. To copy the YouTube layout, this movie list and movie single area needs to have a width of 610 pixels. And again, I'll temporarily give it a border so that we can see what's going on. And I'll give it a red border for the moment. And we'll remove that later. All the thumbnail images, which all have the class thumbnail, can be styled together. They just need their size specified, which is width 178 pixels, height 100 pixels. And this gives us a 16 to 9 ratio. Finally, the footer, which doesn't need a dot because it's not a class, it's an element. Now, if we don't clear the float left, which we applied up here to the favorites list, this will try to continue forever, and all the other elements will try to position themselves floated to the right of it. We don't want this, so we'll apply clear both to the footer. This clears all floats so that the footer will appear below the main movie area and not beside it. We'll give the footer a height of 60 pixels and temporarily again another distinctive border. I'll give it a green one this time. And we're going to give it a top margin of 30 pixels to give a bit of space between the footer and the main page. Save and check. And if we compare it with our target, which seems to have disappeared, we can see that we're getting somewhere. We've got the basic box structure done. At this point, before we go any further, we'll pause to just check this layout in all the browsers. 
This is Firefox. That's OK. This is Opera. No problem. Google Chrome. No problem. Safari. No problem. And Internet Explorer 10. If you press F12 in Internet Explorer 10, then you get Developer Tools. And I'm going to check this by clicking on Browser Mode and checking Internet Explorer 9. That's OK. Internet Explorer 8 is not OK at all. I mentioned earlier that in Internet Explorer 8 and any versions prior to that, the new HTML5 elements are not recognized and the layout doesn't work at all. So in the next video, we're going to have to solve that, which we'll do using a script called HTML Shiv.